and welcome to my ZIFCON 2021 conference. Quite stoked to be here as this is my third time at ZIFCON, but actually the first time when I'm presenting. And given what uh, amazing uh, guests ZIFCON team always managed to uh, to get to present at the conference. I'm really, really prou proud and glad that this year I had a chance to, to present my point of view. Uh, what we're going to talk today is intelligence requirements and in particular how to make the requirements work for your organization in a way that, that, will, that they will effectively align the, the needs of the intelligence team and the incident response and security operations, meaning monitoring and detection teams. So that they can work in in concerto and uh, deliver the the results that will be beneficial uh, beneficial for whole organization without uh, without misalignment of the expectations on both sides and without misunderstandings about what uh, what those uh, teams can do. So starting with a bit about me, currently I'm a consult consulting engineer at Cisco. I'm working on threat intelligence and threat hunting issues with the Cisco customers. Earlier I worked in the various hunting uh, and intelligence roles, well mainly, or I also work as an incident responder, uh, first line SOC analyst and so on. Earlier I got my law degree, uh, I worked academ academically a bit on the national security and countering cyber crime issues including use of uh, digital forensics by the law enforcement and for today's presentation this uh, this my professional experience in information security and moving from the, through those different roles to finally working on this uh, implementation and issues of threat intelligence was an inspiration uh, in a way that I started recently thinking thinking quite about um, not only focusing not only on the technical aspects of threat intelligence, the, the latest uh, reverse engineering uh, developments, how to track the infrastructure and so on, but uh, how to effectively implement intelligence programs in the organization and how to uh, how to make things work so that uh, intelligence will be seen uh, as a facilitator and uh, force multiplier instead of just you know a cost center and burden and that nobody knows what to what to do with those intelligence reports. Uh, if you will have any questions or will try to will want to reach me after the the presentation, please feel free to. I'm on Twitter on LawSecNet. Feel free to email me or just connect on LinkedIn and drop the drop the a private message. Uh, so let's start with the definition of the intelligence requirements. This is the the quick one that I grabbed from the free dictionary based on the dictionary of military and associated terms. So intelligence requirements and the subject general or specific upon which there is a need for the collection of information or the production of intelligence or a requirement for intelligence to fill a gap in the command's knowledge or understanding of the battle space or threat force. And for the for today's talk, Topic, I think the second definition will be will be especially important one because the the filling the gap is exactly what uh, what we'll be talking about and what is the the purpose of the the threat intelligence team in uh, modern uh, security organization at least uh, at least uh, in my view so that uh, the role of the intelligence will be in security operations will be to uh, either fill the gap of what is needed by the incident responders to to more effectively and more efficiently remediate and contain the incident or in terms of monitoring to fill the detection gaps uh, so that the uh, the team will be equipped better to detect more and more advanced uh, threats uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what they are doing now with the detections oh sorry about that so figuring uh, out that each presentation will have uh, probably one of those this is my take on the swiss canal memes so the what we will be talking about today is uh, focus and allocation of resources so just as we saw these uh, little excavators having to initially deal with the with the mess that the the giant ship ever given has uh, uh, done to the swiss canal 
uh, regardless of how well researched uh, and big your intelligence team is, uh, it is very unlikely that you will be able to, to cover all the sources. Uh, sorry, all the threats that are relevant to your organization. So especially in current light landscape, when you've got APT, you've got some uh, state sponsor actors and on top of that, or even not the uh, other way around, but you've got those on top of the of the numerous e-crime activities, ransomware incident and so on. Uh, it's not um, it's not very likely that that your team will have a chance to efficiently and uh, properly analyze each of those and deliver the the perfect reporting so the the intelligence requirements will help in focusing those efforts on what is uh, most uh, relevant in the day to day operation and what uh, what can be uh, sorry and what, uh, what which focus of the intelligence will have most meaningful impact so to start us up with uh, just one more meme uh, is that when you think about the intelligence products uh, especially if your intelligence team is uh, more, a bit more advanced and is not satisfied just with parsing open source reporting or uh, getting some some thread feeds and parsing them for the purpose of uh, introduction into your your security program uh, actually uh, it will be often the case that intelligence team and operations team, team will want the same thing at the same time so that incident responders or monitoring team will come to the intelligence uh, and say that they want to uh, latest information on the uh, on the threat trends and what is going on and what should they look for in detection or how should, uh, they can contextualize the uh, the incident so they know how to remediate it proper and so on and so on and then intelligence team will will uh, will uh, come at the operation team with similar requests that they want to see the latest activity of what you saw so they can exploit and analyze it and disseminate it and and maybe make a cool blog post or cool presentation for for zipcon or another conference and they want to dig into those implant samples to reverse engineer it and so on and so on so to avoid being stuck uh, with this uh, let's say loop of everybody wanting the same thing at the same time uh, it is important to to establish the establish the expectation of what uh, each team can deliver uh, and how most effectively the this this intelligence process can start for for both of the uh, both sides of this this dilemma uh, preparing for this presentation, I wanted to see what are the trends in the in the intelligence requirements, uh, and I look at the SANS uh, 2021 Cyber Threat Intelligence Survey. And uh, regarding the use of the or documentation of uh, intelligence requirements as opposed to the to those uh, or to creating them ad hoc, it seems that that situation is not not changing that much. So you can see that uh, approximately like a, like a 30 40 percent and got the We've got the document requirements, 30-40% uh, got them ad hoc, uh, and uh, like at 20% got no plan to define them at all. Uh, sorry, sorry, we, we plan to define them and see about 6% got no plans to define them at all. So it seems that that, uh, uh, that uh, approximately like this, this 40% got the document requirements and this, this does not change much. What is, uh, what kind of uh, either surprising or I think uh, should change is on the on the right side graphics that you see regarding who contributes to the uh, CTI requirements. So not surprisingly, we've got security operations, uh, CTI personal and incident response and at the top three position. And in fact, this is what we are gonna talk about today about this interaction. But in my view, this uh, this CTI team, uh, CTI team involvement in the requirements is uh, is too low by approximately thirty percent. So as I will talk about in a minute, uh, I think that uh, it's highly beneficial for the threat intelligence team to to be involved in the creation of requirements. You can even say that uh, it's absolutely absolutely necessary for the uh, for that to be the case to avoid some 
uh, misalignments or, or lack of understanding of what's going on. So the problem with uh, intelligence general is that uh, making intelligence is easy. Of course, there is an asterisk here, like, like it's a lot of hard work to track the infrastructure and to, uh, and to analyze the samples and analyze incidents uh, and intrusions and so on and so on to categorize them, cluster the activity. But in general, if you've got intelligence team and um, you will tell them to, to produce some intelligence. I don't think it will be it will be hard for them to do so. They will certainly put out great reports and uh, show you the trends and so on, and will uh, can do presentation on the latest iteration of malware. But uh, if uh, it won't be directed in proper way, this can uh, very very. Uh, quickly diverge into this directionless intelligence when what what the intelligence team is doing is very much separated for the, from the operations and the day-to-day -day work of the uh, people on the front line and this is this is a very under undesirable situation obviously uh, both because the the uh, the input from the intelligence will not help the the operation, which is which is major bugger. But also because the intelligence team will will be more or more seen as the as the burden rather than than helpful uh, helpful part of the organization. So making the relevant and actionable intelligence is harder because uh, it involves uh, working with stakeholders on what what is needed. But it's uh, for me it's still not. Um, uh, it's still not enough. So uh, the intelligence team, from my perspective, not only have to be relevant and actionable to the organization, but also have to be uh, written or produced in the way that the implementation of the findings and uh, feedback loops will be quite frictionless, so that uh, each uh, each uh, intelligence product that co comes from the intelligence team to operation uh, will not burden the, the the other side with difficulty of parsing and interpretation of data, but will actually decrease time that they have to spend on the on the tiresome activities on on the alert fatigue and empower them to to look for for what the intelligence team pointed them to. So the, uh, the intelligence requirements problem. It's difficult to to make good intelligence requirements. Period. I would say, and we can't expect that, that suddenly the the teams which might not have uh, the experience with threat intelligence will come up with a very very directed and very focused uh, requirements that that the intelligence team will will know precisely what they are looking for and so on. Uh, more likely this might be this may initially comes up as uh, as a general uh, very general requirements like like you know tell me what are the threats to the organization uh, and so on which which might be good requirements but probably will will not be in the in the security operation environment uh, where uh, where the SOC analysts and responders and hunters are dealing with more more tactical uh, more tactical oriented side of the thing so specific campaigns or, or specific malware and so on. So it is necessary to work with those stakeholders to align and uh, the benefit from involvement of the intelligence team in the uh, in the uh, creation of requirements will be twofold. First of all, the, the intelligence clients or the customers or however you want to call the, call the recipients uh, will feel that they are actually part of this organization so that intelligence team is working from them. And the intelligence team will obviously uh, will know what to deliver and how to make them visible in the organization. In order to facilitate the creation of intelligence requirements, I've came up with a method of uh, considering three questions or three factors in terms of uh, how the intelligence products will, will then be processed uh, in the further security organization. So first of all, the question is about the location. So who will use your intelligence or, uh, or where the intelligence products will be, will be delivered uh, after their creation? Whether be, this will be a SOC team or the 
uh, or the incident response team or other stakeholders uh, and maybe even more importantly where the intelligence team is situated in regards to, to these teams in the organization so how close is the the relationship <coughs> sorry relationship between both teams uh, second question is how so how the intelligence products will be used whether uh, will you de deliver a report that will be, have to be manually parsed and analyzed and then uh, the hunting team for example Will, will create the relevant detection by themselves or this will be uh, a feed of IOCs in some or either in CSV or sticks, uh, sticks format that uh, there then can be automatically parsed by the monitoring tools or what what will be the technical workflow of the intelligence uh, of the uh, of the, your inputs that will have to be processed and finally, and maybe more import, uh, most importantly, uh, will those products be used at all? So delivering the intelligence uh, inputs uh, or outputs of your process inputs for the operations team, you have to consider all the time whether you will be providing, team, uh, providing them uh, with uh, actual support or additional bar burden that will uh, require them to, to introduce uh, new workflows or to spend a lot of time on parsing them and so on and so on so this this last question will be will be um, so to say a, a, a amalgamation of previous two so whether the your relationship with the with the other teams as an intelligence analyst will be will be sufficient to correctly deliver the products and whether the <clears throat> the format of them will be so that they will be easily uh, easily transposed into into what is happening in the in day to day work uh, so starting with the who question, this is uh, the question about, as I said, uh, the location of intelligence and uh, the specifics of uh, of what uh, will literally what will happen when you will click the send button in Outlook or whether you will upload it to some threat intelligence platform. Uh, who will see this notification? Who will receive this email? Uh, and how they how and how they will then download your results into into their uh, their specific team uh, this is not only regarding the the process of delivery itself but also or even more importantly about where the where your uh, teams are aligned on the organizational chart as here the, the location matters and why it matters i grabbed here this uh, this very nice uh, uh, scheme or graphics from the recorded future when they will uh, where they uh, present various uh, security teams and organization and what i like most uh, about this uh, about these graphics is that you can see that threat intel here just as as a one uh, data point in the organization so we've got a bunch of those uh, inputs and outputs and the uh, levels of operation and uh, you have to consider where the where the threat intelligence team uh, is located so uh, for example in my uh, earlier work I work in a setup where the threat intelligence team the threat hunting team and incident response was in a very closely in the organization organizational structure and I, um, I had to consider uh, this in a way that uh, for example when I d deliver the report to the incident response team our interaction as we were literally sitting literally sitting in the same room uh, will be much different than delivering the, the report to the SOC analysts who are not not, uh, not directly this in the same uh, organizational uh, structural place. So when I delivered the report to the incident responder, I could literally walk to them and talk about it and whether they like it or not, or what's uh, what's their view on this and so on. And uh, this did not ha this could not happen with with uh, some further teams. And this directly uh, correlates with how much feedback you will get, uh, how much you can fine tune the report, uh, how much should you care about whether the the product will be will be clear and uh, and easy to use. Of course, it should be clear and easy to use in all um, your deliverables. But uh, but it is normal that you will consider the fact that uh, that uh, this uh, the closer you are in this this charts, the more push and the more influence you can have on uh, on how those uh, how those are used and the more feedback you can get to even fast uh, to even quick uh, enable faster workflows and uh, in, uh, feedback loops of the of fine tuning of your intelligence products 
Uh, the second is how. Okay, so you deliver the report to the incident response team or to the SOC analyst. Uh, what they will technically do with these things? Whether they will uh, they will have to uh, parse it, they will have to extract the indicators and put it in some other forward uh, format. Uh, whether they will whether this uh, the way that you are outputting intelligence is maybe even uh, it maybe even can work directly with the monitoring tools because there is uh, there is uh, some plugin for the for the uh, CM or for the EDR. Basically, this is about the the technical steps uh, that the uh, that the analyst or the responder or uh, other recipient uh, have to have to perform to to um, make the intelligence part of their uh, knowledge base uh, to make it uh, make it useful in the detection or in the contextualization of some activity this is the technical part and finally while this is of course important and your uh, and your reports should uh, should definitely uh, be aligned in a technical manner with what is uh, what is uh, with the tech stack of the of other organization. Uh, I believe that still the the most important question will be about the alignment with the overall day-to-day uh, -day operation. So as an artist here said, you are the only person who gets to decide that uh, who gets to decide what you will be remember for. Uh, it is entirely uh, entirely up to you as an uh, intelligence uh, intel threat intelligence analyst whether you will be seen uh, by the rest of the organization as a as a burden or actual enabler of the uh, of the more effective operations so go getting straight into into the specifics uh, you have to uh, you have to consider that on daily basis uh, what will be the what will be the the first thought that the that the operators uh, or analysts or uh, uh, responders have when they'll see the product. Whether those will be an, another report that they have to manually parse and include in the multiple tools that that's, uh, takes them like an half an hour a day. Uh, whether this report will be deliver, delivered daily or more than daily so that um, even worse, it can come into a situation that in uh, multiple times you are uh, interrupting the usual workflow, so they would, uh, they will have to uh, they will have to step away from the daily activities and uh, and take care to to introduce this intelligence into detection method because this is the latest and greatest threat on our organization, and also uh, quite importantly. Uh, quite importantly, what will be the feedback mechanism? So, uh, as we as we alluded to in the uh, in the location question or who question, uh, what will be the the process of the uh, of delivering uh, do's and do's and don'ts for your team uh, back? So, whether uh, this will be the situation again when the, you can just walk from one desk to another to talk about it, uh, or will this will have to be put in a mail because someone is working maybe even different country and in a different time zone and won't be able to reach you directly, and finally. Uh, after all these things are done, will you be uh, able to measure an impact? Because sometimes it might be hard to, to get this feedback and you might want to, to get some, uh, let's say, uh, let's say more direct or more objective, uh, objective data on how your, how your intelligence is, uh, is used. So whether in fact in this, uh, in fact your IOCs or other or behavioral analytics or something else uh, is able to to help detect more incidents whether time to remediation on the response site is uh, uh, deems with your intelligence products and so on and so on so the um, the bottom line here is that the true effectiveness of the intelligence, uh, threat intelligence, intelligence products does not stem uh, singularly from the alignments with the technical stuff, uh, stack and with the uh, timeliness and relevance and actionability. Uh, it stems from the frictionless introductions of the workflows of the other teams. So that uh, in fact, when the, uh, I'm probably repeating myself, but this is this is like 
like the point that I want to drill into. Uh, so uh, it comes to the whether the, these reports, when they uh, when they land on the desks of other analysts, whether they are seen uh, as the uh, as the helpful and useful uh, and useful uh, product or input or what they are seen as another checkbox to be ticked during daily day operation so you know that there was a directive for SOC team to uh, to use the intelligence reports from our intelligence team in their daily work and now every time they see an email pops up from the you know threat intelligence team at your organization.com uh, they have to stay back and and make some some boring stuff to to make it work and this is uh, this is precisely as with the security awareness tips so um, often you can see the security awareness tips on uh, you should check every every detail of your mail of how the recipients and you can you should get the header to see how this uh, how the mail was delivered between the gateways and so on and so on and to check for uh, typos and grammatical error and so on and it uh, it drills down to the fact that uh, that you should in fact spend like a half an hour on every mail uh, before you make decision whether to to even open it or to to check any link and obviously when you when you pass this kind of advice to to your users uh, this will not happen because that's not how the how the email works the how the email works is that you've got 100 messages uh, in your inbox maybe per hour or something like that and you have to skim through this and this uh, these tips uh, i really really don't like them because they are just not relevant to how how email works and this it will be the same with the uh, with your intelligence if your intelligence it might be the best and greatest and technically awesome but if we, if it will require some uh, some bizarre out of ordinary out of workflow uh, steps for the operators to use them that this will simply be ignored and uh, and not used at all and based on this um, using those uh, using those uh, framework that i've presented let's now work on how to how to make those intelligence requirements uh, for different security teams so um, as a general um, especially in the beginning of the program i believe one requirement should uh, answer one question so for example uh, one question rel uh, relevant to detection of certain family of malware or stuff like that again this uh, the requirements should be driven how day-to-day uh, -day operations are working so we will go uh, deeper into it in specific example but uh, they should stem from how the <clears throat> how the analysts or responders or whatever are working with their products uh, talking about security operation and intelligence uh, teams i i think it's a bit easier be, um, uh, than talking about the intelligence team and uh, executive board or this level of stakeholders because there will be uh, they will be closer on the organizational chart as we talked about and they will be probably much more granular in terms of what is expected from you so so you will be able to focus uh, focus more on a very specific uh, very specific cases which i think will be will be easier for the analysts uh, so now feast your eyes with this with this graph that I prepared entirely in PowerPoint. Uh, so this is how, in my view, the the feedback loop should sh sorry feedback loop should operate between the the intelligence uh, hunting or SOC, so monitoring team and the incident response. Uh, so from my point of view, it is uh, it is necessarily that those uh, feedback loops uh, goes in both ways in. Uh, in case of all the all the all three elements of this structure so you can we can start with the this very simple uh, this very simple loop that should be should be kind of natural so that intelligence uh, works on analysis of some threats uh, it provides the description of art, uh, of activity to build some behavioral uh, analytics or the just IOCs for the SOC, uh, SOC analysts and the hunting team to introduce into the, the detection workflow. And then when the hunting team uh, finds something or the SOC analyst gets an alert and flags it as a true positive, uh, it gathers some data and passes it to the, to the incident response to, to remediate it, contain it, and so on follow the incident response cycle and uh, obviously the incident response uh, will find uh, more and more 
uh, more and more details about this activity and then it will finally closing the loop provides it to the intelligence so they will dis dissect and analyze it perhaps uh, look for some malware samples on virus total uh, and based on that they will build a profile and pass it to the hunting and uh, yeah, hunting and monitoring and so on and the loop closes but uh, also importantly for me, the the reverse uh, loops mainly mainly concerned with the feedback are are essential. So as we talked about uh, uh, about this in the in the Spider-Man map, uh, the intelligence also wants this uh, this data from the incident response teams. Uh, but it uh, has to also be able to deliver. So in terms of incident response team, one way it goes that the uh, after the incident response data is passed to the intelligence team for this uh, on using this uh, F3 EAD exploit, the analyze and the dissect activity. But on the other hand, when the incident response team is dealing with something, they will have an intelligence requirement uh, to to produce context on some activity, so they can. Uh, and they can remediate it faster, discover this uh, this activity, the whole scope of this activity sooner and so on. And when they will have this whole picture, they can provide and feedback on fidelity and quality of detection to the monitoring team who found the activity in the first place. And similarly, the uh, intelligence provided some description of the behavior to the to the monitoring team, so they can uh, they can find the find the evil in the organization. But the the hunting and the the SOC can provide the intelligence with uh, frontline data, what they see on a daily basis, some trends, the most commonly used version of implants and malware and so on. So they can again uh, proceed with the exploit, analyze and dissect and produce more and more better intelligence. Uh, so going to now to the specific examples of how uh, how this can work. So starting from the uh, from the SOC analyst. SOC analyst will most likely want the the situational awareness, tactical information on what is going on uh, in the wild, what the what they can ex expect from the from the monitoring tools to to alert them on, and. Um, uh, and how they can uh, how they can find more information about these activities, prepare better for the incident response, and so on. So uh, delivering the intelligence to security operations center will uh, will much depend on the maturity of SOC. In my uh, in my experience, I mean uh, it depends on what is the actual role of SOC. Let's say uh, first tier, first line analyst, whether he just looks at the alerts that uh, he has a little control on the of the architecture of security controls and can just input or look for IP addresses to block or whether he uh, actually can proceed with deeper investigations and for example passing the this uh, composite object of the of the indicator like the data on the registration of domain will be will be, they will be able to work with that uh, to uh, to introduce it into into their monitoring effort. So example here, most straightforward and most common will be uh, probably closing gap of the security tools. So intelligence team finds something that is not detected by the uh, current secure uh, current monitoring uh, monitoring setup, and they will uh, pulse it for uh, for SOC to to. Uh, Added the specific indicators that can uh, that can uh, put a band-aid on the current situation. Uh, so uh, coming back to our uh, our framework of who, how, and will. Uh, who is the security operations center? The operators, analysts who daily work with the uh, with the monitoring solutions. Uh, how they will implement the signature that uh, that you will provide them in their in their monitoring tool, uh, be it SCM or EDR or anything they work from. And will uh, so does the solution that they use uh, will frictionally support the the input you provide. So, uh, for example, you deliver a CSV with indicator. As a part of the of your intelligence workflow, uh, is it as simple as uploading the CSV file to the 
uh, to the tool and it will be parsed automatically and this is done on the on the part of the SOC analyst or maybe even better you just upload the this uh, the CSV to the threat intelligence platform and it will be populated automatically and then SOC analysts only have to recognize that this comes from threat intelligence and should be should be treated with uh, with certain attention um, or the situation is completely other way around that uh, SOC analysts have to manually parse the inputs and put the indicators manually. And in that case, you may want to you may want to focus on maybe the most important ones or only the criticals, uh, the criticals that will have to be alerted, and so on. So the requirement that uh, that can be created based on this framework maybe provide a detect a method of detection of implant because this uh, this uh, from the intelligence finding this is our detection gap the implant inks in format that will that will support our tool so that again coming back to this point about frictionless introduction uh, for the analyst the, the introduction if intelligence will will not take them back from the from their main job uh, which is detecting uh, and alerting on evil in the organization and they will be able to quickly quickly deliver those results uh, then another example, intelligence and incident response. Uh, incident responders most likely will want to will want to have a context of the uh, activity they analyze. So they are in the middle of investigation, then found uh, they found this specific payload or installed implant, uh, or they found that this uh, certain activity like exfiltration or uh, attempt to to, to hide uh, destroy the evidence is going on in the organization, and they will want to know where to where to pivot their investigation uh, from there uh, to discover the whole scope of the of the activity so again coming to our framework of whw uh, who the incident responders will get the, get the intel and what they will do they will look under your intelligence reports they will look at their forensic report in the making and they will probably cross reference it to see if in fact this activity that you are describing is what is going on in uh, in the environment and if it is they will they will pivot uh, pivot uh, to uh, they will pivot to uh, looking for the for the specifics, uh, so looking for other signs of the activity based on what you what you provide with them. And will they use it? Well, they might if the if the description that you have uh, of the activity that you have in your report or other other deliverable uh, will match with what the uh, incident response team is uh, is going through on their uh, in their uh, standard workflow. So, for example, uh, you have to understand uh, whether the incident response is using a certain live response tool to collect evidence, or maybe maybe they have a custom solution that. They they use and in the first place they are going for for memory forensics or for file system forensics and working on that uh, you will um, you will be able to construct the uh, construct your uh, intelligence product in a way that will that will catch their attention because for example they are going through from memory forensics first point and in this case uh, you will provide them with, with some description with some uh, description of how the processes are uh, how the malicious processes are created, their process trees, they how what uh, handles they open, and so on. So they, when the responder sees it, they will see, aha, this is precisely what I'm working for, and I can see whether there are some some matches. Uh, and requirements based on this. So describe this activity of, the, of other adversary in terms of the specific uh, artifacts like the uh, output of memory forensics, output of this forensics, so network artifacts and so on and so on. And the third example, the intelligence and hunting. Uh, so I spent, um, I would say, most impact, impactful parts of my career in the hunting role. So I will have some some obvious biases. Um, I think there can be hardly hardly an intelligence, uh, sorry, hardly hardly the uh, the hunting efforts, proper hunting efforts without intelligence, because otherwise it is guessing. You might have the like the best. Uh, uh, the best ideas about this some um, uh, so potentially dangerous activity that might happen in your environment and uh, on paper it's it's perfect but if you will not have this uh, this uh, 
intelligence understanding of whether this is actually used by some threat actors or this is relevant to your threat profile, then uh, the the returns from the hunting will be severely diminished. Diminished. And the second bias that I have is that. Uh, the only limiting, sorry for the type of factor, uh, is how much the hunting team can take. So from my perspective, the the hunting efforts are the like let's say third line activities, and this is where the detection should shine in order to to detect those uh, those highly ev evasive threats. So so the more um, advanced uh, intelligence, uh, more uh, uh, in depth technical, basically the better. So uh, what uh, what this uh, does to our WHW framework, the threat hunters will receive those intelligence and using those they will build a hypothesis on how this activity can be can be detected in the environment. So uh, will they use it? They will if they will have uh, if the uh, if the visibility they have matches uh, with what your intelligence products describe. So obviously when you will describe some, some great and sweet network indicator, but on daily work they are not working with that at all. They are using, uh, they have little visibility and that's not what they focus. Um, it's highly unlikely that will it will be perfectly utilized. So again, you have to just with incident responders and daily workflows, you should work with hunters to establish what are their favorite things to hunt in, what are the favorite types of logs, and then attempt to, for example, describe the malware installation mechanism in terms of command line syntax. Uh, so summing up this uh, this part of the presentation, there is one thing uh, I would like to also emphasize, uh, because there often comes a, comes a dilemma of uh, consumption and generation of intelligence. So should you move to this generation, or is it uh, is it enough for you to to just uh, consume the uh, reports of other vendors and so on? And this is again where the requirements that were based on those those earlier uh, earlier suggestions might shine because uh, when you have uh, re intelligence requirements that are that were tailored to the workflows of specific teams uh, you can accurately assess whether whether there is a need to uh, whether there is a need to generate the intelligence because this, those gaps cannot be fulfilled with the consumption of the of some third party free or, or paid reports or whether there is uh, the for example the response team needs this context of context of the incident and all the other vendors just cannot satisfy this uh, with how they are reporting and then you can uh, assess whether the additional efforts by the intelligence team will be worth this additional visibility in the organization. So this is this is the way again that requirements can support in very common problem. Okay, so I guess this is this is my my thing. Uh, what I wanted to to tell you today. Hope you enjoy it. And if you have any question, I will I'm here to answer them. Thank you a lot.